Hi, my name is Jonathan Rotz, field agronomist for Pioneer. I wanted to take a moment today to talk with you guys a little bit about cover crops here as we're coming into the spring, uh, thinking about all the different things that we're, we're going to be doing. And one of these that comes to light and some folks have asked about is managing cover crops. Um, as you can see, I'm actually standing in a field of cover right now. Uh, some of the main benefits of cover crops is just overall carbon sequestration that we have. And really, for us in agriculture, the big win on that is an increased organic matter in the soil, building organic matter over time. Obviously, cover crops also transfer nutrients. Um, cover crops will grab nutrients and hold on to them throughout the year. But you also think about your cover crops and your roots and everything that can actually take some of those nutrients and move them a little bit deeper into the soil as well. A huge benefit to cover crops, one of the original reasons that guys started to plant cover crops is to minimize uh, your soil erosion, uh, both water erosion and also wind erosion, which can happen a lot throughout the fallow season of winter. And then obviously soil structure is a huge part. Um, in the spring when we want to go out and do a lot of things on our fields, uh, having additional soil structure both from the root structure that's there as well as we have exudates that come out of those roots such as globulins and things that will actually create soil structure that will last past the termination of that cover crop. Not to mention in a, in a situation like this we actually have beneficial mycorrhiza that still are uh, able to attach to these cover crop roots and may be able to go to our next crop especially if it's a grass. So there's a lot of things that cover crops do. Um, one of these things that's getting really popular, at least in our area, is thinking about all these benefits and how they actually become an even greater benefit as the cover crop gets larger and larger. Things like additional organic matter or carbon that's going to be uh, turned into that soil. If you think about that rooting structure, as we, as we look at that cover crop later in the season as it grows, those roots get down lower. And again, some of that is just moving and, and utilizing those nutrients. But along with that comes some management considerations. Now, one of the big things that everybody thinks about is whether to burn that cover crop off early or to let it go. And a lot of folks would uh, say that the cover crop that I'm standing in right now would be, you know, getting to the place where you start thinking about burning it off. It's about eight inches or so. Uh, but we've had a lot of success with guys going larger than this. Now, I will say that management of a cover crop for a large uh, cover crop being planted into needs to start in the fall. So we're going to first off uh, establish a much lower seeding rate than maybe some other cover crops. A lot of times for a small grain, you know, maybe only a bushel to the acre or something similar to what I'm standing in here. Now, some of the other benefits we've found from planting green is at times we see less damage to our actual primary crop from slugs and things like that. It appears that a lot of these pests would prefer to feed on our cover crop than our other crops, but if we uh, eliminate that crop early on and the crop, the, the slug has only the crop to uh, feed on, that may be the, the hardest hit. Um, we also do have to think about some management in the season as well though. If we are thinking about our nitrogen usage and things along those lines, we do have the potential, especially as these cover crops get larger and start to elongate their stems, to actually tie up some nitrogen and not allow that uh, to be released quite as quickly. So things like putting nitrogen down with the plant or stream bars or things like that may be advantageous to get that nitrogen down through that extreme amount of carbon left on the surface of the cover crop. A lot of folks think that maybe it's all but impossible to go through large cover, but a lot of folks have also found that this is, uh, this is very possible. I would say it's a whole system. You have to start in the fall, plan it out, and think about even your planter setups and things like that. There's lots of great resources around if this is something you're thinking about. But I thought at this point in time, as we're greening up and really getting things going and, and seeming to have a little bit of an early spring growing season here for these cover crops, it's a good time to think about how are we going to manage these cover crops and what are we doing to benefit or negate our, um, our cover crop benefits as we manage them. I hope you found this informative. Stay safe this spring and have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.